We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for you. In this video, we're going to continue painting this Gale Force 9 purple worm. And we are going to paint this skin webbing that kind of connects all of these scales on the back. As always, if you have suggestions for something you'd like to see in a future how-to video, please leave it down below in the comments. The colors that we're going to use are going to be very similar to the colors that we used inside the mouth since it would be the same kind of fleshy tone, but it's going to be just a little bit brighter. We're going to start with squig orange mixed with a drop or two of Lamian medium. And we are going to apply this color to all of the skin area that is underneath each of these scales on the back. There's not really a hard line of where the skin begins and the scales end. And really the only way to tell the difference between the two is the way that they're sculpted. The scales have a very flat surface and then the skin is sculpted to have a lot of texture to it. So you know it's supposed to be a different material. Sometimes you'll see me bracing my pinky on the mini. In general, it's a good idea not to touch the mini as much as possible because the oil from your hands can get onto the miniature itself and that changes how the paint adheres to the model. However, when doing detail work like this, I really have to brace myself in as many points as possible. So that just that little pinky really helps me steady my hands. Here's the worm after that squig orange has been applied. You can see I got it into all of the cracks underneath just about every scale. As the mini turns his neck, the skin is entirely hidden. And the same thing is true as it kind of goes into the ground. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to highlight the whole area that we just painted squig orange with Cadian flesh tone. This is also mixed with a little bit of Lamian medium. And instead of applying this in one flat coat, I'm going to do very small strokes that really accent all the texture that's sculpted into this skin. So there are lots of bumps and lines and we're just highlighting the tops of them, leaving that squig orange in all of the recesses. And then in a few areas where there aren't any sculpted ridges, um, because the area is too small, we can just add a very thin line to kind of highlight that as well. But I want to make sure that I get this Cadian flesh tone highlight all the way across the squig orange. All right, here's the worm after that Cadian flesh tone highlight. Next, we're going to put Caraber Crimson over the whole section to really make the shadows a lot darker. I don't need to apply this very heavily. I am painting it the consistency it is right out of the pot. However, I want to make sure that I move it around a little bit so that it doesn't get too gloopy in any one area, especially since there's a lot of little ridges in this skin. If I don't move it around, it's going to pool and look really plasticky. Here's the worm skin after we've applied the Caraberg Crimson and given it a chance to dry. Next, we're going to take some Kislev Flesh and we're going to mix it with Arcadian Flesh Tone and a little bit of Lamian Medium in about a 50-50 ratio. And I'm going to apply this highlight in the same way that I applied the Pure Cadian Flesh Tone. I'm going to do lots of little tick marks highlighting the top of these ridges. However, I'm not as concerned with making sure I get the whole area. I really just want to concentrate this highlight in the areas that you can see the most of. So where the skin is the largest, that's where I'm going to be focusing the highlight. And in the areas where you can see very little of the skin, I'm going to allow that part to continue to be a more shadow. Here's the worm after we've applied that 50-50 highlight. We're going to apply one final highlight using pure Kislev Flesh. I'm going to be very sparing with this highlight. I'm really just using it as kind of a super highlight in the areas that would be in the most sun. Um, so I'm actually not even going to apply this to all of the skin sections. I'm just going to apply it to the four that are the largest on the back that are right on top where the sun will be shining right down on them. 
All right, and with that, the skin is complete. You don't notice it as much when you're looking from the very top of the worm because of the way it's sculpted. However, it's a little pop of brightness as you kind of look at it from the sides. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more how-to videos, I have another one where I'm going to paint the base of this worm in the mini Wargaming vault in the link down below in the description. If you don't already have a vault membership, go ahead and click the link. You can sign up for a seven day free trial and get access to my video as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini Wargaming vault. So go ahead, click the link, start your free trial, and happy Wargaming.